day we rejoice and we're glad in it. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence here today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just love that song, The Name of Jesus. Wow. Awesome. Let me read a couple things to you, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, how many know there's election coming up? <laughs> yeah. Amen. And, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of different opinions out there uh, on politics. Um, uh, politics, is, it's, it's really not a good word at all. It's just... I don't, I don't like the word, uh, you know, politics, you know, the politics in the government, politics in church, politics in, you know, your workplace. It's just politics. It's just, you know what the word politics means, don't you? Uh, it means, poly means many, and tick means a blood-sucking creature. <laughs> so, you know, there, there can be rulers in government, but they don't have to be political. It could be just righteous, right? Amen. Anyway, so there's lots of different opinions about, you know, people involved and not involved and all that kind of stuff. And, and you know, we've, we've uh, been fed the lie for a lot of years about the separation of church and state as if the church shouldn't be involved in all that kind of stuff. And, and, and that, that's, you know, they, they try to say it's out of the Constitution, it wasn't out of the Constitution, it was out of a letter uh, that was written. Uh, but anyway, that's a whole other story. But I, I saw this quote from uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And he said this, he said, the church, the church must be reminded that it is not the master or the servant of the state. Let that sink in. The church must be reminded that it is not the master or the servant of the state. Uh, in, in the past uh, couple of years, uh, we saw the state becoming the owner of the church to tell the church what to do and when to do and how to do and not to do and lawsuits and everything else, suing churches because, you know, they had a church service in Canada, they put people in jail. I mean, just insanity. But he says... We are not the master uh, or the servant of the state, but rather the conscience of the state. Now, in order to be the conscience of the state, we've got to have a conscience ourselves that gets revealed or spoken out so that the state, the government, knows what's right and what's wrong. The whole lot of them don't seem to know what's right and what's wrong anymore. In fact, like Isaiah said, you know, we, 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 we've said, you know, good is evil and evil is good. And, and, and just a, a lot of insanity out there. So he says, it must be the guide, not the critic of the state and never its tool. Never its tool. Amen. You know, many years ago, have you ever heard of Planned Parenthood? <laughs> um, you probably have. But, uh, you know, when that was established with Margaret Sanger years ago, um, even though they've taken all the statements from her you know, away, you know, out of Planned Parenthood's, you know, literature and all that kind of stuff. But the fact is that she wanted to eradicate those that were less, what's the word I could use? Um, help me out. Important, Important inferior. Um, didn't look like she thought they ought to look like, blacks in particular. It was a plan to eradicate the inferior people in America. But here's the thing. She went to the churches, the preachers, the pastors, to convince them that this was a good idea. Not, not to eradicate, but, but it was a good idea for population control and on and on and on. Yeah. So he says, if the church does not recapture its prophetic zeal, it will become an irrever ir ir irrelevant social club 
without moral or spiritual authority. And again, you know, th this is prophetic because we've seen that in operation. We have seen the, the, the weakness. We have seen the, uh, the bowing down to the state. And I don't mean just about COVID, but, but so many other things. But without a voice, we cannot affect our government. We cannot affect politics. How the world around us is, is being run. Can you say amen? Now, Mike, I'm going to just uh, steal some of your stuff here, if that's all right with you. But um, Mike wrote um, last night, um, if I can get to it here somewhere. And Mike uh, does this every, every Saturday, basically. Um, writes um, a, what do you call it, Mike? Word for the day. Word for the day. Uh, and um, we have uh, a, a number of our people that uh, write awesome stuff uh, every day, almost every other day, whatever the case is. But you ought to read them. We send it out in your, in your um, emails and so forth. And uh, I'm stalling because I'm trying to find it. But he, he writes anointed. Amen. 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 So if you don't mind, Mike, I'm going to read this if that's okay. But his word for today is elections have consequences. He goes on to say, it is often said that there are two things that should never, we should never talk about around other people. Many workplaces, you know, they have rules. Uh, when I was in the fire department, there was a, a rule. You know, you didn't talk about religion, politics, you know, three things that you couldn't talk about. I forget what the third one was, um, what you had for dinner. So I don't know. But anyway, um, just trying to see if you're awake. Uh, but um, you find that many workplaces, you know, you can't do that. You can't talk about that. You know, don't, don't show anything. Don't, uh, you know, and... You know, I'm, I'm a really easygoing guy. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a nice guy. I, I like to get along with people, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of shy and, uh, you know, I don't like to fight, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, when they said, you, you can't talk about religion, uh, that's when I brought my Bible in and said, <clears throat> we had a Bible study in the biggest firehouse in the nation. Uh, you know, we had a, 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 a fireman's gathering, you know, preaching and so forth. And, uh, and I would watch... Uh, Kenneth Copeland on TV, uh, you know, at the watch desk, and they'd all gather around there on Sunday. I mean, you know, it's just if, 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 if somebody tries to shut you down, that's when you ought to speak up. Yes. Some of you are still walking in fear, but we pray for you. So, you know, the first is religion, second is politics. Well, he, he goes on to say, well, you are certainly in luck today because the word I have to share is neither religious or political. In fact, you may be surprised to find out that I actually do not like religion or politics at all. Say amen. 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 That, that's me. I don't like religion. I don't like politics. And some of you think, you know, I, I say this a lot when I'm out there, you know, with a lot of uh, unchurched people that I hate religion. I hate religion. I said, you know, we had a, a, a Zoom meeting one time. We were ministering to first responders, you know, during the pandemic. And um, one of the guys asked the question, you know, what's the difference between faith and religion? And I wasn't going to say anything. And uh, so uh, the, uh, the sergeant that was with, with me, the police sergeant, he says, um, yeah, come on. Come on, chaplain. Tell, tell us what's the difference between faith and religion? And I made this statement. I said, well, actually, um, if you look historically, uh, religion is responsible for um, probably more deaths than almost anything else in the world. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Go ahead. So anyway. Religion provides a set of rules to earn God's favor, while politics attempts to manipulate the will of the people in order to gain their favor. If you watch these commercials, these political commercials, it's like, it's insane. 
Well, they're going to do this, and they're going to do that, and they're going to do this, and they're going to do that, you know, and then they're not going to do this, and they're not going to do that. I mean, it just goes on and on, and it's just a bunch of malarkey. I think Joe Biden made that famous, didn't he, malarkey? But anyway, <laughs> but it's just insane, just this stuff, you know, spend millions of dollars to tell you a bunch of stuff that ain't even true. It's just crazy. Anyway, but they want to try to get you on their side. So he says, you'll be relieved to know that God is not religious and elections are not political. Hmm. Now I know that they may, may not sound correct, especially to anyone who has turned on the television lately. We're bombarded with all the ads, text messages, emails telling us uh, why we should not like a certain candidate. And, and to be honest, much of that is political manipulation. But it is important to us, for us to separate politics from elections just as it is important to separate religion from God. Amen. 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 And it's, it's, it's really such a shame what religion has done to turn people away from God. Yeah. Yeah. There was a post, my wife read it last night, from a, a fellow that, um, that he said, I would rather trust my kids with a drag queen than a member of the clergy. Now that sounds really offensive, doesn't it? But I get it. Yeah. I get it. I talked to a fellow, he's a member of the Catholic Church, had been for years, been baptized in the Catholic Church, you know, went to Catholic Church all his life, takes the kids to Catholic Church. And this is, you know, when all this was kind of blowing up and not a couple of years ago. And uh, I said to him, I said, uh, so, you know, um, what's up with that, man, you know? Uh, and, and he said this to me, he said this. He said, well, I still go to the Catholic Church, and I'm not picking on any particular church around here or whatever. I don't know much about them. I'm just saying. He said, I still take my uh, children to the Catholic Church, but if the priest says, uh, you know, to my son, you know, can you go somewhere with me? He said, we ain't doing that. It's just hard to imagine being in a church where you, 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 you well, anyway. And, 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 you know, not to say that it hasn't happened in other churches, you know, that may not be Catholic, maybe this, maybe something else. But, but, but that's, that's religion. That's how many people see God through the eyes or the lens of religion. And it stinks. Not to high heaven. Hmm. <laughs> So elections are very important, and we should let politicians distract us from the consequences our decisions have. So he goes on to say, and I just messed it up. We're mad here. <clears throat> Y'all got grace for me today? Good. I married Grace, you know. Her name means grace, so it's... So there's always grace there with me all the time. <clears throat> We're mad, okay. So, he says, in recent weeks, I've been reading the books of, of kings in the Bible. There are a lot of great stories contained in those books, but overall, I find them quite sad. Yes, there are amazing miracles of Elijah and Elisha, and you have the awesome wisdom of Solomon, and the majority of the chapters are a sad and cautionary tale of the consequences of bad leadership. It's tough to deal with bad leadership. You know, it was, when I was a firefighter, you know, many years ago, um, I was, uh, I think I just turned 19, but anyway, I was in a, a fire company that uh, was busy. I mean, you know, a lot, a lot of calls, a lot of fires and so forth, a lot of opportunities to get killed. Let's put it that way. And uh, I, I had a, an officer, a lieutenant, a leader at the time, that was a little bit goofy. Smoked cigars all the time. Now you know somebody smokes cigars. All the time. It's got be <laughs> but he almost got us killed a couple of times. And that was the, the uh, what's the word? Impotence? Is that a word? No. The, the, something to push me towards... What was that? Impetus. Impetus. It's close. I only finished high school, so help, help me out. You know? 
but it moved me, let's put it that way, to be an officer because I looked at him and his leadership, and I didn't hate the guy or anything, but he's just, just who he was. And I said, you know, I'm 19 years old, but I felt like I could do a better job than him. I could do a better, and I'm not, that's not pride, it's just that I just saw what leadership can do, get, get somebody killed. And when you're dealing with a job like that, you want somebody leading that, you know, we have some leaders right now in America that, that are getting people killed. Yeah, right. A lot of people killed. And five years later, I became a lieutenant myself. And I thank him. <laughs> I thank him that he gave me that epithet. <laughs> the drive. Let's put it that way, the drive. All right, let me finish up here. I got to hurry up, hurry up. So, over and over again, you can read the story of leaders who ignored God and pandered to the popular opinions of the people and nations around them. And over and over again, you see the nation full of death, despair, and utter hopelessness. I mean, you know, the Bible says, God says that he writes these things for our understanding and encouragement and enlightenment, that we don't need to repeat what we have seen happen. Amen. Yet in the midst of this, whenever the kings would take a stand for what is right, the nation would be restored and the people would prosper. Yes. Amen. We're talking about elections. Thanks, Mike, for the material today, by the way. Now, thankfully, we don't have kings in our nations, or some may think they are. Or our states. We get to choose our leaders. We get to choose our leaders. We get to choose our leaders. Unless they steal an election, but that's another story. But the impact of the leadership we choose today is no less important than the impact of the kings of bygone eras. Eras, eras, impetus, something like that. <laughs> our, nation, <laughs> our nation is a product of the leaders we choose. Not only here, what happens here, but around the world. We choose, and they lose, and we lose. It's no coincidence that our nation is, such, is in such a tragically broken state. Our economy is broken, our schools are broken, our families are broken, our cities are broken. And if you want to know the reason why you need only look at the leaders in charge. Amen. That's right. Defund the police. Oh, what a great idea. <laughs> Duh, what a great idea. Let's defund the police. Let's have less police on the street. Let everybody can just do whatever they want, kill anybody they want, shoot anybody they want. You know, what do we see? It's like nine people shot in Philadelphia last night. Nine people shot. Just drive by, shoot. You know, had a school shooting. You know, young kid killed coming off the ball field. Just, just insanity. I didn't mean to go there, but anyway. Proverbs 28 and 2 says, when there is moral rot within a nation, its government topples easily. But wise and knowledgeable leaders bring stability. Elections have deep and lasting consequences, and we are feeling that today. For generations, we have chosen leaders at all levels based on political party. Yep. Forget the parties. But you have to recognize what parties stand for. I mean, look at their uh, platforms and the things that they stand for. I'll never forget the, uh, the last elections, uh, uh, what was it? Um, I think it was the 2016 around there. Anyway, uh, the, 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 we had one party that actually voted God out of their platform. I'll let you guess who it was, but... Mm. Elections have deep and lasting consequences that we're feeling for generations. We've chosen leaders uh, at all levels based on political party, emotions and fear. I mean, there's so much uh, that goes out there to try to reach people emotionally. I mean, we've never seen uh, a society as emotional as it is today. I mean, just 
And, and how your emotions go, it, it, it's, it'll mess up your mental health. I don't know about you, but I am shocked at some of the things that I have seen. I mean, it's just, it's just you know, I was on I was a Good Morning America, one of those morning shows, and they're having a, a, a nice conversation with a guy with a, a, a blue dress that went down to the floor and a full beard. That used to be something that you, you went to the circus to see, the bearded lady, you know. But in this case, it wasn't a bearded lady. It was a bearded man with a dress on. I mean, this is crazy. And, 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 and to take the insanity even further than that, NPR, you familiar with NPR? Yeah. National Public Radio, yeah. they played a recording of a woman having an abortion. They played it. What? Leaders. Leaders, leaders that we have a responsibility to do something about. Because we have a right to vote. Amen? Amen. So, where am I at here? So we allow these candidates to be smeared, great candidates to be smeared. You know, uh, it's a blood sport if you go into politics. I mean, they will, they will, they will destroy you quickly. Oh my God, you look at the stuff that's put up there. I mean, they, whatever they can do, whatever they can dig up, whatever they, what, what, look, look, what they look what they did to Trump. I mean, they, they tried to do everything possible to totally destroy him. Still are, still are. Still are. And you, you sometimes you ask the question, who wants to get in politics? I mean, you, you, blood sports. I mean, they will destroy you. You know, there was a, 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 a congressman, he was running for office, and, and uh, he wasn't home, but his kids were at the house, and somebody came and shot at the house where his kids were. You didn't see it on the news. Don't see it on the news. But, you know, Mr. Pelosi gets hit with a hammer, and, and you know, it, it, it just goes around the world, you know. I mean, they, anyway, it's... You know, all the uh, uh, abortion, not the abortion clinics, but, but the uh, pro-life clinics that are helping, you know, girls that, that find themselves pregnant and, you know, helping them get through that and, you know, whatever they need. Uh, there have been multitudes of attacks on those places. Christian, godly people that are trying to help. Yeah. But you don't hear much about that. So... We've allowed great candidates to be smeared and labeled as extreme simply because they stand for what's right. In a word, the silence of many has been deafening. The silence of many has been deafening. You know, they, they, they did a, 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 a accounting, I guess, whatever you want to call it, of, of churches that when, when Roe versus Wade was, was taken down as far as the Supreme Court uh, uh, taking it off of the federal mandate of, of somehow being some kind of made up constitutional right of abortion. And they did a survey and they found that ma the majority of churches and pastors in America didn't even mention it that following Sunday. Didn't even mention it. Afraid that it might offend somebody. Silence is deafening. I'm always, I'm always amazed, you know, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put something on Facebook and, and um, <laughs> depending how offensive it is, you know, I might get one, maybe two people, you know, that like it. But if I put up there, you know, I had a picture of uh, our, our great grandkids, you know, they were all in, sitting in the little yellow car and it looked like they just pulled up, you know, and I said, hey, my great grandkids just pulled up, you know. Oh, man, all kind of people like that, you know. It, it, it wasn't offensive to them. So they just... But God didn't give you a voice to fear being offensive. The gospel is always offensive. I said the gospel is always offensive to those that walk in darkness. 
But it's only the light that causes them to change and to see that there's something other than what they believe. When you don't confront lies and deception, you are harming that person, not helping them so they don't get offended or, or unfriend you or whatever the case might be or not talk to you anymore. Because the entrance of his word brings light. And when you speak his word to somebody, I told the story before, but I like telling this, I'm going to tell it again. But uh, I was a, a captain in, in you know, a super house in downtown Baltimore. And uh, my uh, other captain of the rescue squad, he comes in one morning. And, uh, you know, in the morning, everybody's out in the kitchen, you know, they're drinking coffee and talking about, you know, what their weekend was, or whatever the case might be. And, and so I come out into the kitchen to get my cup of coffee. And I see this crowd kind of circled around the captain. And uh, I kind of, you know, get a little closer to hear. And, 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 and what he's saying to all these guys is uh, his wife left him, you know, last night. And um, she wants a divorce. She's out of here. Goodbye. All that kind of stuff. Uh, and... Um, and it wasn't because he was ugly. In fact, <laughs> Teresa's awake anyway. <laughs> but he was, a, he was a good looking guy. He was a bodybuilder, you know, I mean, real muscular, all that kind of stuff. He, he did all kind of stuff. You know, he did the high angle rescues, you know, coming down off a helicopter on a, on a cable, you know, and rescue. He did all that kind of stuff. Underwater stuff. I mean, just everything. And so they're all talking, you know, and, and, and he's saying, you know, his wife left him, you know, and, and, and guys say, yeah, how guys are, you know, some guys, not all guys, but some guys, you know. Well, let, let, you know, let the old bag go, you know, and get another one, you know what I'm saying, you know, because they do, man, he's a good looking guy, he's got, you know, he's got a lot going for him. And they're all giving their opinions. And then here I come. But you don't want to be offensive, you know, you, you, don't want to, you don't want to offend anybody, so, you know, you just want to maybe be quiet, you know, you just, what do you have to say anyway? And I went and got my Bible, and I came back out again, and I said, you see here in Proverbs where it says, to rejoice in the wife of your youth, and, and some other things, it says some things about her body in there, too, I'm just, I won't say that to you, because this is all men I was talking to, so anyway, and I read that, you know. In front of all these guys. And I said, you know what? Your wife can come back to you. And they all looked, you know. And we started this conversation. And little by little, I didn't know it until they told me later. Little by little, the circle was dissipating. And they were all, they were all backing up. But as they were backing up, they were going like this. Like, he's got you, you know, the Christian guy, you know. He's got you now. What are you going to do? Yeah, you know. I'm a fool, right? I said, she can come back. You believe with me, she can come back. And I gave him a little gospel track that we had, we had made. A real simple little thing. It says, just receive Zoe life, the life of God. I said, here, take this. Pray that prayer. Watch what God will do. We left, you know. Later on, he told me, he said, I went to my office. I prayed that prayer. I asked Jesus to come into my life. Yeah, yeah. Two weeks later, his wife came back. Woo. Yeah, amen. He went on to become the chief of the fire department. But anyway, you can just hide and not be offensive, you know? You can just let people go to hell if you want to, you know? Or you can speak up even though it might cost you a little bit. People might not want to talk to you. I find it all the time. You know, I go to places and events and banquets, things like that. It's hard to find somebody who wants to sit next to me. Because they think I'm going to preach to them. Because I just might. <laughs> anyway, let me finish up here. Oh, gosh, where did the time go? Stop sucking up all the time, will you? Really quick, really quick. Um, I have a sister who lives in Baltimore, my baby sister, Sherry, and um, she was at a gym one day, 
And so this guy comes up to her and starts telling her about Jesus and giving him, giving her his testimony and said that, yeah, this guy, he's in the fire department and he was telling me all about Jesus. And uh, she says, oh, in the fire department? I have a brother-in-law that's in the fire department. And, uh, you know, and then it comes out to me <laughs> that see how he was going out after that and preaching to my sister. She was already saved, but it's so neat how God will work and send people your way. And just to show how effective it is, that just showed us how effective speaking to one person is. Because that person will tell somebody else and tell somebody else. Amen? Amen. 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 I was quick. I was quick. So don't be afraid of the gospel. Don't be afraid of it on Facebook. I got a new Facebook friend back there, Cherie. Did I say that right? Huh? Yeah, I did. Oh, good, good. Cherie. She puts a lot of good stuff up on Facebook. She's pro-life. Some people are afraid to say that. Afraid to offend somebody. Anyway, I better move on before I get offended somebody. Um, <laughs> but Mike goes to say this. In the midst of the brokenness, you know, he says our silence has been deafening. But in the midst of the brokenness, there's still hope. Now's the time to say enough is enough. Now's the time to raise your voice. Now's the time to lose your reputation. Who cares about your reputation anyway? Except you. You'll never find anybody. You go through history of the gospel. You'll never find anybody that cared about their reputation. Serving God. They just didn't care. And people, Oral Roberts. I was listening to uh, his son Richard Roberts uh, just a, a week or so ago. And he talks about his father. I mean, he was a great man of God. I mean, he had instantaneous miracles. I mean, signs and wonders, just all kind of awesome stuff. Uh, he built the university. He built the hospital that they, they fought him so hard, they, they, they stopped the hospital. They closed it up. But he had all kind. He was going to, you know, tie medicine with, with, uh, with, with faith and healing. But he talked about how people hated him, hated him. Because he believed uh, in, in healing and he believed in prosperity. And, and they hated him for it. And they did everything to try to destroy him. If you're going to do anything for God. And don't, don't look, you know, well, I, I'm not a preacher. I'm not, you know, that's not me. I'm not, no, yes, you are. Everybody's got a voice and everybody has a responsibility to speak truth. Everybody. Say everybody. everybody. Whew, man, I'm sweating up here. <clears throat> Now's the time to say enough is enough. Now's the time to raise your voice. Now's the time to lose your reputation, your image, for the sake of future generations. What's happening to our children is ungodly. We got to take a stand. And we can't bend. Elections have consequences. And we believe America will be saved. Lastly, Galatians chapter 6, out of the Amplified Version. Eugene was telling me that uh, last, last night at the, uh, the, it was a Trump rally, no, it was not the Trump rally, it was uh, for Mastriano and those guys, or Oz? Yeah, okay, anyway, they were, they were all there, but... Uh, he said that, I didn't see it, uh, but uh, he said that um, uh, President Trump uh, asked Kenneth Copeland to come up and pray. <laughs> Don't want to mix politics with religion. Well, it wasn't religion, I just tell you. It wasn't, wasn't religion at all. It was God. Amen. So things are difficult. Things are messed up. Things uh, need to really uh, turn right side up again. Amen. But let me just encourage you with this, with this word. Paul said this. Let us not, what you say? It is Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Thank you. And let us not lose heart. I told you last week the scripture that said, you know, be of good cheer. 
It doesn't mean suck it up, buttercup. It means be bold, be courageous. Don't lose heart and don't grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time, everybody say due time. There is a due time. There is a due time. Boy, I remember when my wife was pregnant and due time was coming. Amen. She got so grouchy. No, no, just kidding. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I, I said you got a little irritable. I'm just kidding. Yeah, no. She was a saint. I'm going to tell you, she was a saint. But man, due time is coming. And you can feel it. Due time is coming. Yeah, I, I, could, I don't know how she rolled over in bed. I just, you know, especially with Jerry. I mean, she was like, I mean, it was, I, I, don't, know how, I don't know how you women do it. I thank God I'm a man. I love children, but I don't want to have them. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to. I'm going to thank God. For in due time and at the appointed season we shall reap. If, everybody say if. If we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. If we do not loosen our courage and faint. There's too many uncourageous Christians out there today. Yeah, I'm talking to some of you watching online. Chicken, chicken-hearted, not bold, not courageous, afraid. I remember Marvin, he was a friend of ours years ago when we were in the Methodist church. We were in Methodist. I, I, I've been a Catholic, I've been a Methodist, I've been a Pentecostal, I've been, a, I, I've been, I've been a lot of stuff, but anyway. But anyway, Marvin, he worked at a bank. But Marvin was on fire for Jesus. And he talked to everybody about Jesus. He would talk to chairs about Jesus. Anybody, anything that seemed to move, he would talk to them about Jesus. And he had a Bible on his desk and some other stuff there, you know, religious stuff. And the boss said, you got, you got to get rid of all that stuff. You can't. He said, I can't do that. I can't do that. I love Jesus. I, I just got to let everybody know I love Jesus. And he said, well, we're going to fire you then. Okay. <laughs> They fired him. <laughs> he found another job. He's doing great, you know. Better job. Better job. That's right. We've got to be bold in the time that we're in. Yep. You know, uh, we're, we're called sheep. Just like Jesus would call, was called the, the Lamb of God. But he's also the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. And that's who lives on the inside of us. It's time to speak up. And I'm not just talking about the election. I'm talking about your life. The life of your family. The life of the people around you. Your neighbors. Your friends. It's time to speak up. You could save somebody's life. You know, we, we have stories of, of, of you know, uh, her, her sister was one of them. Uh, and another uh, lady that was uh, a young girl that was, uh, her father was elder in the, in the Methodist church. And she got pregnant. And her father, the elder, told her to get an abortion. And my wife talked to her. And she decided no. And she had a beautiful baby. And, and life and went on. And she's so happy she didn't. No, I don't have to run it against her. Amen. And she's, she was so happy. It's like the joy of her life. Don't be afraid. Her baby. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to let people know where you stand. I don't mean right. push it on them, but there's always opportunity. Always. Amen. Always. Go ahead. I just said one scripture here. It's Luke chapter 13, verse 31. The same day there came certain among the Pharisees. Let me know what Pharisees are. The religious people, Right? Saying unto him, get out of here. It says, get thee out, actually. Get thee out. <laughs> Saying unto him, this is him talking to Jesus, amen? Like, get out of here and depart. They don't mind offending us. For Herod will kill you. Imagine him saying that to Jesus. 
And Jesus said, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils and I do cures today and tomorrow and the third day. I shall be perfected. He told the fox what he was going to do. Amen? Mm -hmm. And that's how we have to be. Come on. The righteous are what? Bold as, as a lion. As bold as a lion. We roar. Amen? Mm -hmm. And we have authority. You know, from the very beginning of time in Genesis, God gave man authority in the earth. And we have the God-given authority with him inside. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Let's be bold for Jesus. Amen. Come it on, says, you know, time. that scripture, uh, Proverbs 28, 1, it says, it says, the wicked run when nobody's chasing them. Mm -hmm. But the righteous are bold as a lion. Yeah. What category are you in? Are you running for people all the time? I'm just talking to the people online. <laughs> or are you as bold as a lion, not afraid to speak up? Right. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, your lunch is probably almost ready, so we better, we better stop. What's that? Can we do a song? I don't know. They, they, might, they might be tired by now. I don't know. But let me, let me just... Um, yeah, can you guys end with a little bit of music? That'd be good. I'm trying to end here. I'm trying to end, but I, I still have something I want to say, but... Can you give me like four, my, four more minutes, maybe just four, just three or four, three? How many, just give me like five minutes. Five, 10, 15, 20, 10. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Father, we just pray, it says, we'll gather together tonight as well, but we just pray, Lord, that righteousness would rule the Lord, righteous men and women would be voted in and churches would rise up, preachers would rise up like never before to speak truth, not be afraid, not be timid about truth. I've seen recently some leaders that I had a lot of respect for turn and support abortion. Shocking. So let me pray, God, for rising up like never before in your church. Your people, God. So your people have a voice. Pray, God, that that voice, you know, as the, the apostles uh, prayed uh, in, in the book of Acts, to give us boldness, greater boldness than we've already walked in. To be everything that you've called us to be, to, to take this gospel even to the ends of the earth, to our neighbors, our friends, our family, to speak truth, to see lives changed. And I felt the Lord saying this this morning. He said, this is, this is a turning point. This is a turning point. Today is a turning point. Not only for America, it's a turning point for the church. Not only for the church, but today is a turning point for you, for your life, for your family. It's a turning point. It's, it's, it's a change that is happening right now that things will never be the same as they were. We're in a time of change, miraculous change, supernatural change. It's time for, uh, for each and every one of us to be fed up. To declare enough is enough. The song by a band called Skillet. The song is called, Are You Sick of It? Are You Sick of It? Are You Sick of It? Some of the greatest healing evangelists saw many people in their family die. John G. Lake was one of them. 
saw numerous people in his family die and finally he said, I've had enough of this. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of seeing people die. I'm sick of seeing people struggle. And he opened his Bible and he began to read again and again to see what exactly is the truth. And then he came across Acts 10, 20, 38 where it says, Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. you got to get to a point where you're just sick of being sick and tired, sick of seeing people not healed, sick of seeing people hurting and struggling in every area of life. But the truth can make them free. So today, mark it down, today, is a turning point. It's a turning point in America. It's a turning point. And I'm not just talking about elections. I'm talking about a spiritual change happening in our midst and across the nation. I'm declaring it. Agree with me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. What do you got? You got a song? Yeah.